Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you a few different techniques for making monotypes and monoprints. So the first thing you should do is gather your materials. I've got an area in the kitchen where I've taped down a piece of tin foil and notice how I've taped it on all four sides. This is so it doesn't lift up as you're rolling out your ink. So the tin foil acts as your inking slab. You could also use a piece of plexiglass. I've got a few different utensils here that I'm going to be utilizing for today's demo. I have a skewer stick, a ballpoint pen, a paintbrush, and just a regular mechanical pencil. So first things first, we can create monoprints or monotypes in a number of ways. Um, a monoprint is a variable image that you can reproduce because you have something called a matrix, which is just an image that you can either trace back over or transfer multiple times to different prints. So I'll be making monoprints with this little bird image. A monotype is a one-of-a-kind image where you don't have a matrix. You're just reacting to uh, the drawing as you're making it. So first, let me talk about this board. This board is a little registration board that I've created. It's just a piece of hard cardboard. You could use the inside of a cereal box. You could use the cardboard backer to your tracing paper. Whatever it is, it should be smooth, it should be flat. Tape down a piece of tin foil inside. That's going to be your inking slab. On top, I've got a piece of tracing paper that I've taped along the side so that, let me turn it this way. When I'm inking up, I can move it out of the way. I can roll ink onto the surface. So I have a little inking slab here. Remember when you're rolling out your inking slab, go horizontally, go vertically, both directions to evenly spread that ink out. Okay, so you've charged your inked surface. You can now lay this over top of it. So this is essentially just a stencil. This is gonna protect other areas of your paper so that you have a little sort of framed image. And the way I created this, I just folded the paper in half before I taped it down and I cut in with scissors here, here, and then straight across. If you've got your X-Acto knife, use your X-Acto knife. All right, so now let's make a mono type. So I'm gonna take a piece of my rice paper, I'm gonna lay it down. I'm careful not to touch any area where the paper is touching the ink because this process works by you placing pressure on the back of the paper. And as you push down, the paper picks up the ink. So if you press down with your finger, or you buff along the edge with the flat part of your fingernail, that paper is going to pick up ink. And you can experiment with a few different ways of making marks. I like this skewer stick because the back of it is flat and it makes this little polka dot pattern. This process in the beginning, it's all about experimentation as you're figuring out what works and what doesn't. All right, I'm gonna lift that image off. And there we have our monotype. Okay, so the monotype, remember, this is one of a kind. I didn't have an image that I was tracing over. I just sort of reacted to, I reacted to the process as I went along. I'm going to do one more without recharging the slab. And we'll see the difference that that makes. So one thing that I want you to note about this image is that it's got a lot of darkness in it. That's because there was a fresh coat of ink on 
the surface. And so as the paper laid down, even though I wasn't pressing down all over the place, it picked up that ink in the non-image areas. So as you continue making your monotypes, if you don't ink that surface back up, you'll notice that your lines in subsequent prints will appear a little bit more sharp or less fuzzy. And we can see that right here with these images side by side. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. Okay. After the second one, you would probably want to go back and recharge that slab. So I would move this out of the way. I would take my roller, recharge the roller in your inking slab, roll it back over top of your tin foil in your little monotype registration board. So this is a way of just exerting a little bit of control over where the ink goes and where it doesn't go. If I were to continue making little drawings like this without recharging the, the inking slab on my registration board, the images would just become lighter and lighter. They would look like ghosts of the first image that I created. Okay, so that's monotype. A monoprint is where you have an image that you can reproduce. So here I'm going to lay another sheet of rice paper down and I'm going to lay my drawing down. Because the drawing exists on this tracing paper, I can transfer it to other prints and that's where it becomes a mono print because you're able to repeat the same image on different pieces of paper. Now there's always going to be slight variations in the way that you trace it, the amount of ink that's down, so that's where the word mono comes in. Mono means one. Print means multiple. You're taking multiple impressions. I forgot his little back. The cool thing about the rice paper is that as you're tracing your image, you can actually see it appear through the rice paper. It's got that transparent effect. And maybe I want to add a few things in here that weren't in my original drawing. So this one, because I had a fresh layer of ink, notice again all of that plate tone. That tends to pick up a lot more on the first print and especially when you're using the rice paper because the rice paper is so thin, it's, um, it's like a whisper and it just picks up everything that is on the surface. So I think I will continue to print this. I would give this another coat. I wouldn't recharge the roller. I would just come over with the ink that's already on here and just smooth it out a little bit. So in smoothing the ink out, I flatten it back down. and I'm putting some ink down, but I'm also picking some ink back up. All right, and then I could try this again. So that's the basics of using your registration board.